Judge, your boys are responsible for Mr. Stevens attending church this morning. That's as fine a boy choir as I ever heard. My daughter Terry's responsible for the musical training. My job is to try to make good citizens of them. Darned if you're not making one out of me. Parson, I'm going to attend services every Sunday. Thank you. Judge, if your boy's hymns can make a Christian out of a newspaper editor, <laughs> boy, that's news. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoyed the services very much. Well, here's some more. Dad's giving me a birthday party tomorrow night, and you're invited. Terry, I'll put that in the social notes. Can you find a spot for this, Jim? I'm going to petition the city council to close Belle Bonner's gambling resort. community. I can't be seen right. Judge John Gray, who operates his J-Bar Ranch for the rehabilitation of underprivileged boys. Professional jealousy. The big boys who come in here don't get any privileges either. That's why they come in. Judge Gray urges the county supervisors to close Bell Bonner's gambling resort. The Bonner woman declares Judge Gray not only preys upon the highly paid workers of the tungsten mine, but upon the youth of the valley. Miss Gray packs a lot of weight. I'll spot him, that. And these long-haired reformers are murder. What happens if he does close us up? You three lugs will have to go to work. Oh, oh you've got, got to take care of this old psalm singer. Oh. How can I go to work? I ain't got time. Now, don't cry, kiddies. Mom will see that you keep on riding the gravy train. What a dish. What is this, a beauty parlor or a modiste saloon? The word salon. Quit clowning, Belle. This is business. Yeah, my business. I built it up from a dive to a high-class joint. No psalm-singing blue nose is going to... Hey, Pete, get my car. Okay. You fellas, get back to your job. Where are you going? To the J-Bar Ranch. You can't take on the judge. He's tough. The right amount of dough might soften him up a bit. Bill, don't try a bribe. I have nothing to lose. No? How are you fixed for teeth? Away beyond the hills in Idaho, where yawning canyons greet the sun. As it smiles above the trees in Idaho To say another night is done Warm summer winds toss the wave and rain Calling me back to my home again To dream sweet memories of long ago Beyond the hills in Idaho when I am lonely, my dreams picture to me my home and all I've left behind. Someday I'll go back to live happy and free. No worry on my mind, it's peace that I'll find. Away in the hills and night of home, where Meet the sun as it smiles above the trees in Idaho to say another night is done. Warm summer winds toss the wave and rain, calling me back to my home again to dream sweet memories of long ago. Beyond the hills in Idaho. Wait a minute, everybody. Wait a minute. Listen. Oh, way beyond the hills in Idaho, where yawning canyons greet the sun, as it smiles above the trees in Idaho. Beyond the hills in Idaho, beyond the hills in Idaho. 
That's a great bunch of kids, Judge. And someday they'll be fine men. If we can only continue building, now that the foundation is laid. You running out of mortar? Oh, I've gotten out of tight spots before. You looking for someone, Ranger? A very pretty girl. Answers to the name of Terry. Last seen in the company of a dangerously good-looking man. Well, in that case, I haven't got a moment to lose. <laughs> Bob, you propose better each time. Now, don't laugh, Terry. I'm serious. You know, I'm going to keep right on asking you. Maybe someday you'll change your mind. Oh, I'm awfully fond of you, Bob. I wish I could say yes, but I've got to say no. You heard that, didn't you, Robin? Oh, how did you know we were here? Simple matter of deduction. Moonlight, soft music. Besides, this is a place where we usually come to propose, isn't it? Now, listen, Terry. What's the score now? 16 to 14. You're two up on me, Bobby. Well, go on and try a couple. <laughs> Oh, Terry, why don't you haul off and say yes? No. Fifteen. Ouch! A note? I suppose this is somebody proposing by carrier pigeon. Mm-hmm. What's his score? Pretty high. Dad's always leaving notes around. Darling, I just happen to think you'd like a birthday party. J.G. It's quite a party. My dad's quite a fellow. But he shouldn't be spending money on me, and the ranch is in debt. Giving his boys a chance in life is all he lives for. That's why he's so determined to make this town a good place for them to live in. Tangling with Belle Bonner isn't going to be easy. There's a feller down in Mexico that's the senior each his dream. He can throw a noose on the wild cayuse and as a lover, he's supreme. He's the pomp and pride of the countryside where the Rio rolls along. He can rope and ride, but he hits the stride when he sings a cowboy song. Dum bum, he's a gentleman from Mexico. Dum bum, that's a mucho way to Romeo. He says, Cindy, read his heart's flame across the Rio Grande. He has a manner that the pretty dark eyed gals can understand. I can sing and dance, I can shoot and fence like a champion matador. And I'm telling you, pals, I can woo them gals like they've never been wooed before. But the clumsy way you court today just fills me with disgust. I can wink one eye as them gals pass by, a maiden bites the dust. Don Juan, he's a gentleman from Mexico. Don Juan, as to mucho way to Romeo. He says, sing your readers heart to flame across the Rio Grande. He has a manner that the pretty dark-eyed gals can understand. Don Juan. <laughs> well, good night, fellas. I'll be seeing you. I'm sorry. Mind if we sit this one out, Judge? I feel a little chat coming on. We can talk in my study. Fine. Quite at all. I wonder that you can afford it. Well, the fruit punch alone must have run you into heavy dough. It can't be my financial standing that disturbs you, Miss Bonner. What makes you think I'm disturbed? You read the papers, don't you? Only the funnies. That's how I happen to catch your article. Miss Bonner, I seriously intend to try to put you out of business. You pack enough weight in this town to do it. Well, that's quite an admission, Miss Bonner. Now comes the proposition. You lay off my racket and I'll help you stay in yours, which I hear has you winging for money. You see, I've got a charitable nature, too. Just how much money would it take to get this boy's camp of yours out of the red? A considerable amount. Whereas I think I can get you out of the town with no cost whatever. That's all, Miss Bonner. Don't give me that judicial brush off. Thirty dollars or thirty days, it won't be all. Would you mind leaving by this door, please? 
That's him in the door. Come on. I hope you're a couple of process servers. We're a couple of old friends. Hey, good looking. Take it from me, this party's a dud. You'll be up to your ears in potato salad and local Maud Muller's. If it gets you, drop in on me. I'm Del Bonner, owner of the town's smartest bistro. That's elegant for saloon. Hello, Tom. Still writing notes? Spike Madigan. This is Duke here, old Mike's son. Shake hands with Tom Allison. He's robbed more banks than you've got teeth. And you end up being a judge. That's better percentage than my old man got. You must be plenty smooth. And it seems you've inherited your father's heavy-handed technique. What do you mean? That upstate bank robbery was a clumsy attempt. What are you talking about? The kid and I are just passing through. And I thought for old time's sake you might... Hide you out? You'll catch on quick. We're plenty warm. Well, you won't cool off here. I don't hide murderers. Oh, you listen to the radio, huh? There are a couple of state rangers among my guests who would be pleased to meet you two. Uh, wouldn't they be happy to know that the Honorable Judge Gray is the notorious Tom Allison? That's all too long ago to even interest them. How would your daughter feel about having an ex-convict for a father? That ex is the result of my debt to society paid in full. Come on, let's get out. by going that way. Probably the radiator. We'll find out. We're fresh out of gas. Plug this right in the tank. Here's that Ford. Do you think he'll stop? He better stop. What's the matter? We're out of gas. <laughs> and where was you going in such a hurry? Canyon City to Bell Bonnet. Bell Bonner? Mmm, I don't blame you. She's about the prettiest view around here. Get in. Sure lucky for you fellas, it was me that picked you up. Is it? Yeah, lots of folks wouldn't pick up strangers at night, in case they might be bandits. But not me. No, sir. I ain't a fear to nobody. It was gasoline. Well, it didn't seem to help much. They got away. Must have caught a ride. We better get to phone and put out a warning. Bonner's is the nearest place. Here we are. There's Bonner's. Listen, those rangers are on our hill. We oughtn't to be stopping in no saloon. Relax, Spike. When we get inside, we'll be just two more guys. See you around. I'm going with you. I'm going to buy you a drink. Now, listen, you've done enough for us. Forget it. On my night off, I'm a playboy. It was reported Judge Grace's two assailants fled in an automobile. 
with Rangers Bob Stevens and Roy Rogers in pursuit. Bring you some gas. Thanks. I picked them up at the sawmill crossings. <laughs> they was plumb out of gas. You were right. That potato salad really got me. My office is right up there. Go on in and wait for me. I'll be there in a minute. Okay, Belle. Sure I am. All okay. <laughs> Pleasure, gentlemen. Business. We're looking for a couple of thugs who just beat up Judge Gray. Really? Yeah, we punctured their gas tank, found her car abandoned at the sawmill crossroads. Thumb to ride back to town. Yeah, we thought of that. Sorry, I can't help you. And you wouldn't if you could. Oh, come now, boys. I may run a gambling resort, but I keep my cards on the table. You can make book on that. Mind if we use your phone? All you need is a nickel. Oh, where to, Frog? That's Roy Rogers. I'm going to buy him a sarsaparilla. And let all this good music go to waste. Come on, let's swing it. <laughs> Frog. Oh, Miss Bonner, I'm just getting warmed up. You set too fast a pace for me. Give me a rain check, huh? Oh, shucks. Blondes ain't got no stamina. Boys, your friend the judge has met with an accident. Yeah? What kind? A couple of state rangers described it as hit and run. Say, we better get out of here. Relax, I got rid of them. You know, I can't figure you out. Why are you fronting for us? Three reasons. First, Judge Gray's trying to run me out of town. Second, I pegged you two from the description over the radio. Third, a couple of hot guys don't try to cool off with the town's leading reformer. Well, I didn't figure he'd reformed that bad. That's what I'm getting at. Reformed from what? A little habit of robbing banks. Are you kidding? No, I rode with him. He's Tom Allison. Tom Allison? Daddy of all bank robbers. I need reviving. How about hanging around here and taking care of your interests? Well, that's the best offer I've had yet. Make yourself at home, good looking. Thanks. We're going to get along swell. Well, didn't you see who did it, Judge? No. As I told you, I was about to return to the party when the two of them sneaked in and... Well, how did you know there were two of them? Well... One man couldn't hit that hard. Must have been Madigan and Springer. Roy, if a couple of fugitives were going to commit further robbery, wouldn't they steer clear of a judge? What makes you think they knew you were a judge? Or that they were trying to commit robbery? 
You don't keep any money around here, and what you had on you was still in your pockets. I'm afraid we'll have to call it one of those unexplainable happenings. Well, from the answers you're giving me, I might as well call it quits. Daddy, you sure you're well enough to drive into town? Why, darling, that tap on the head merely knocked the cobwebs out. He doesn't seem at all worried about it. Oh, I don't think any more will come of it. Just a couple of gentlemen passing through with a blackjack in their hands. Well, I can see you're not going to be much help. I'll have to figure this out myself. Roy, was it robbery? No. Well, that takes care of the robbery. Was it somebody harboring a grudge? Oh, no. I guess that takes care of the grudge, Modium. Maybe it was a case of mistaken identity. Oh, no, that's definitely out. Say, you don't mind me just coming along for the ride, do you? No, but please don't talk so much. I'm worrying. Every night the prairie moon rolls on. There's a lonely cowboy riding. Seems I hear him sing a carefree song, but it's only tears he's hiding when the light of the Something. Says she's got too much else on her mind. See the judge? Yeah, I talked to him. What'd you find out? He doesn't seem to know anything. I wonder. How's the law doing this morning? Well, don't tell us you care. No, I want to see the judge. Well, he's not in here. He's about to open a meeting of the Board of Supervisors. That's why I'm here, in the interest of Canyon City. Well, that's right civic-minded of you, Miss Bonner. I'll take you into him. Come in. A lady to see you, Judge. Shh. Don't confuse the judge, Ranger. In your book, I don't measure up to the lady standard, do I, Judge? I'd rather not go into personalities. They're interesting to me, especially duo personalities. Like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, or Judge Gray and Tom Allison. I like you two better than Jekyll and Hyde. From what I read about your exploits, you had manners. Like that charming little habit of leaving notes of apology every time you pulled a job. That showed imagination. You didn't come here to reminisce about my past, Miss Bonner. No, but it'll help, Mr. Allison. I can guess where you learned my identity. Really? From a pair of murderers named Duke Springer and Spike Madigan. Now, take it easy. I don't mess around with the underworld. In fact, you're the only criminal I've ever met. I've got to hand it to you. Judge Gray, mentor of youth, leader of the community. 
One of the toughest bad men the West has ever... I'd like to get a load of the Board of Supervisors when they find that out. Would you care to address them this morning? I'm not the telling kind. I believe in live and let live, if you know what I mean. You'd like to have me back down on my anti-gambling campaign. You catch on quick. It'd be pretty stupid, wouldn't it, to brand Terry as a criminal's daughter? I suppose it would at that. I knew we could make a deal. Now go on in and speak your little piece. Tell them Bell Bon is a good egg after all. I'll try to make it very convincing. Leave the door open, Tom. I'd like to hear you throw your pitch. The idea is to sell them. I'll do my... Good morning. Good morning, Judge. Good morning, Judge. Hello, Hello John. Sam. How are you, boy? All right, Joe. Gentlemen, I've called this meeting to discuss what action the board ought to take against the gambling at Bell Barner's place on the county line. Well, I'd like to close it up. What's the matter, Ed? Still sore because you lost your hog money there Saturday night? <laughs> <laughs> Canyon City is something more than a boom town. It's a community of homes, of women and children and young people. They're the ones I'm thinking about. And I don't think we should let a handful of racketeers prey on them. The judge is right. Yes, we've got to think of our kids. What do you propose to do, Judge? I propose we petition the city council to draft a law with teeth in it. A law that will put Bell Bonner out of business. That's the best way to stop it. Let's drive him out of town. I agree with you, Judge. Will you come in now? out of sight. What's the difference? None of these scissor bills know me anyway. Judge Gray does. What's the matter, baby? You don't look very happy. Did the old man call you a bluff? Yeah. Next time you two can deal a hand. You want Spike and me to go ahead? Right. Suits me fine. I can use some more folded money. After you get it, you'll spend the next few days where it won't do you any good. What do you mean? I've got a little hideout up in the hills waiting for you and Spike. You can just relax up there and play gin rummy until things cool off. Play gin rummy with Spike. I don't trust him. The guy's a crook. This is Judge Gray speaking. The Chickasy Fork. To identify them. Why, I've already told Rogers I didn't see the two men. All right. I'll be there. Concert they're having. Ah, well, that's a break. We'll keep in the lunch room. She can be pure as streams and the bubbling fountains. Mine, she's gonna be. I says, Sal, should we ought to get hit? Shall I name the day? But her pappy showed up with a two hole pistol. Stop! He said, Woe is me, my children. Woe, I say. But her pappy showed up with a two hole pistol. Stop! He said, Bullfrog sleep by the lily pad pond, and the pollywog, he comes by. The pollywog wink, and the bullfrog blink, and he opens up his eye. Said the bullfrog, pollywog, let's take a swim in the lily pad pond close by. When the bullfrog div, then the pollywog give with a stop. It's dry. Whoa, it's me, my children, whoa. Give and the pollywog give with a stop. It's dry. I got a mule, got a mighty fine mule, boys. I got a mule for sale. But I think that I ought to tell you why. He's got a granny knot in his tail. He turned his nose at my cart and clothes. He turned me down today with a hee haw hoot at my catalog suit. He stopped and ran. Stop. 
Let's try the side door, Roy. Well, they sure did a good job of it. What does it say, Bob? Sorry, but I happen to need the money. T.A. Come on, boys, let's get our horses. certainly took your time. I've been waiting here over an hour. Waiting for who? What are you talking about? Well, didn't you and Roy send word you wanted me to meet you here? I certainly didn't. Did you, Roy? Well, no. The man on the phone said that you wanted me to identify those two hold-up men. On the phone? What man? Looks like somebody pulled a fast one on you, Judge. Yeah. But why? I don't know, but... Well, then what are you fellas doing here? We're looking for a couple of men who held up the bank a while ago. Held up the bank? Yes, and kill Clem Piles. Clem? Well, did you see him, Bob? No, they got away before I got there. Well, did, did anybody see him? No, they wore masks. And here's a hot one. They left this note. T.A. Signing off on the job. How do you like that? As Bob says, it, it is rather a hot one. Yeah. How does a firecracker, Judge? Well, uh, we better be riding along. Yes. Yes, of course. Uh, good luck. I came as soon as I could after I got your message. It sounded urgent. Read that. I lied to you about those two men. They were Springer and Madigan, all right. I should have told you the truth, but they had something on me. You see, I'm Allison. You? Yeah. But I had nothing to do with the bank holdup or Clem's death. Bell Bonner found out about me from them. She offered her silence if I'd stop my campaign against her. When I refused, they held up the bank, killed Clem, left the note signed T.A., and then sent the old-timer letter to the newspaper. Now, if she talks. Or if Bob gets suspicious and starts digging into the records. Yeah, and I haven't an alibi. The phone call fixed that. And everyone knows I need money. We've got to put the blame where it belongs. Then you do believe me. Don't worry, Judge. I'll let you know the minute anything breaks. I had a hard time buying a paper. What, what is this? Oh, that their headline is startling, that's what. 
Ten? Go on, read it. What does it say? Ten? What's the matter? Can't you see it? Well, yeah, I, I can see it all right. Oh, shucks, Miss Terry, I can't read it. <laughs> Frog Millhouse, that's a tragedy. Well, it's gonna be, Miss Terry, if you don't tell me what everybody's reading. $10,000 reward for the capture of Tom Allison. Tom Allison wanted him bank holder. Thanks to a mysterious letter sent to this newspaper, signed Old Timer, the authorities are the belief that the one-time notorious bandit has struck again. Yes, sir, he sure has. I wonder what the letter says. Old Timer recalls similar notes to the one found in the Canyon City Bank as a trademark of Allison's. This idiosyncrasy... Idiot. What, Grizzy? <laughs> <laughs> a peculiarity. A habit like Dad's. He's always leaving notes around. Well, he don't initial him Tom Allison, does he? <laughs> I should hope not. <laughs> I'd hate to throw the judge in the clink. That'd be embarrassing. I'm depending on him passing sentence on Alice after I catch him. You gotta round him up, Frog. Can you catch him, Frog? How are you gonna do that, Frog? Oh, I'm gonna comb the territory. What does he look like? Well, how do I know? I gotta catch him first. <laughs> <laughs> don't you think you should find out first and then catch him? I never thought of that. <laughs> <laughs> Why, that makes it simple. Boys, let's get up a posse. Okay. <laughs> Maybe I could find out what he looks like. Oh, would you? If you could do that, I'd settle for a hundred bucks and you could have all the rest of it. Well, we could pay off on the ranch. With that money, we could pull a judge out. Let's try it, Miss Terry. Let's go to work. Boys, it's an idea. A splendid idea. In a couple of days, we may have something to go on. out there that time of night. Could be Tom Allison. Oh, you're crazy. I'm not crazy, and you know it. Say, what goes on here? Oh, we're just passing around looking for Allison. You and the boys are taking unfair advantage, aren't you? How's a bandit going to keep on running when a pretty girl's leading the posse? Speaking of pretty girls, 17 ought to be lucky. How about it, Terry? Why, of course not. How perfectly ridiculous to be asking silly questions at a time like this. I'm serious. So am I. Well, you're one up on me. Hey, listen, Terry, you and these kids crazy? Is it crazy to try to save Dad's ranch? That's what that reward money would do, and I'm going to try to get it. Look, Allison is dangerous. I want you to keep off these roads. Now, take these kids and go on home. Is that an official order? That's right. He's the head ranger. Oh, shucks. The posse's papa's sending them home. All right. After the afternoon stage arrives, I may have the laugh on you. Who is she expecting on the stage? Tom Allison. Allison. Or a reasonable likeness of him. What? A picture. Miss Terry's gone all out on this manhunt. Nobody knows what Allison looks like, so she ups and writes her girlfriend on the Boise Daily News. So her girlfriend ups and has Allison photographed? No, she dug one out of the morgue. Then she telephones Miss Terry that it's on the stage. Well, Roy, I've got to get back. You mosey along, keep your eyes peeled. Say, Frog, how about you riding along with me? No, I better not. I gotta meet the stage. I don't want that picture kicking around. Well, neither do I. But I've got a hunch Bob will be there to get that picture. Why, he can't do that. He can't double-cross me. He can't unless you cross him. Well, doggone. Well, I'll hamstring him. I'll hog time. I'll... That's an idea. I'll tell you how to go about it. Come on. Thank <laughs> you. 
Andy? I don't know. I... Say, have you got a special envelope? Yeah. Right pretty girl asked me to drop it off the J-Bar. Well, a right pretty girl asked me to get it for her. Terry Gray. Mabel's has a picture of some feller. Ain't losing out, are you? Well, your guess is as good as mine, Andy. Are you expecting someone? Mm-hmm. A stout man with a package. Would you settle for a rangy guy with an envelope? Especially if it's got a picture of Tom Allison in it? Where did you get that? I stopped the stage out of town and told Andy you were in a hurry for it. Well, I might have known Frog couldn't keep a secret. Well, now that you've outsmarted me, do you mind if I have a look at the picture? I think your dad better decide that. Why? It's my letter, isn't it? You see, Dad, I had Mabel Smith take that picture of Allison out of the files. The boys and I had a wild idea of trying to save the ranch by getting the reward. Well... <clears throat> Don't laugh at me. It's no joke. In a way, it is, Terry. You see, this is a picture of me. You? Yeah. Tom Allison? Terry, I think your dad stopped being Tom Allison a long time ago. Long before he became your dad. But then, by trying to play detective, I've... It's all right, Terry. You didn't know. I guess nobody's interested in this picture of Tom Allison. That's where you're wrong, Rogers. Made a special trip out here to get there. Well, you haven't changed much. A little older, perhaps, but still a smooth customer. Bring him along, Roy. I'm sorry, Terry. You're barking up the wrong tree, Bob. Now, listen. I'm still head man in this outfit, and I'm giving you orders. Well, I'm not taking it. Roy! Hey, Roy! <laughs> I done it! I done it! I tried a square knot on a granny knot, and a slip knot. Is this your rope? Yeah! Oh, no! Come along, Allison. trying to tell decent people how to live, and him, Tom Allison. It's a crook, always a crook, I say. You say too much. Tom Allison, standing on his record of honesty since his release from prison 22 years ago, and his subsequent appointment to the bench as judge, states confidentially that he will beat this rap. He might do it, too. What about me and the boys, seeing that he don't? It's my guess that Bill Bonner will try to do something to keep the judge from coming to trial. That doesn't look good. Just in time. Huh? We've got to catch Bob before they do. Hey! What is it, Roy? There's a gang of Bell Bonner's men, and they're looking for trouble. Well, I can handle them. All right, you go ahead and handle them. But let me take the judge out of this. No, I'm not giving up my prisoner. But I tell you, they're looking for trouble. So are you. Now, you go on your way before I...
we better split up. Taking the other road. Small place, but looks like it's gonna be home for a while. Looks mighty good to me. Yeah, let's just hold up here for a few months. By that time, Madigan and Spring will be a thousand miles away. Are we gonna hunt them upstate bandits while we're resting? Yes, but we've gotta work fast. Bob will have a price on my head in no time. What a mess I've let you in for, son. Well, that's all right, Judge. You know, now that their scheme has worked, I've got a hunt Springer and Madigan will show up at Bell's again any time now. Well, what are we waiting for? Not so fast, Frog. Roy and I can't show our faces at Bonner's. Well, I can. I'll go and get them fellas. There's a slight difficulty, Frog, that you don't even know them. Yeah. I never thought of that. I know. What we need is a clue. Yeah. Hey, what about that abandoned car you found, Roy? Phony plates and registration, of course. Car? Where'd you find it? At the crossroads. Jumping Haddock, when? The same night they slugged the judge. Well, fry me for a frog. I had them right under my thumb and let them get away. You what? I picked them fellers up at the sawmill crossing and give them a ride. Well, would you know them if you saw them again? Would I know them? I went into Bell Barners with them. I'm going to go get them. Well, wait a minute, frog. How about you coming over here and listening for a change? being very sociable. I thought I told you to stay in the office. I got lots of for you. That ranger was in here pining for the sight of you. I know, but I saw him first. Relax, relax. There's nothing to worry about. Howdy, Miss Bonner. Hello, Frog. Three sarsaparillas. Glad to see you again. I'm glad to see you. Say, wasn't that Stevens that just left here? <laughs> he couldn't catch a cold. Now, you take Tom Allison. Them rangers will never capture him. Never. Mm, that's good sarsaparilla. Where was I? You were talking about Tom Allison. A real old-time bad man. You know, them rangers don't understand the psychology of a man like that. Are you an authority on criminology? Well, I don't know nothing about that, but I know all about crooks. If they deputized me, I'd have him back in the clink in no time. How would you go about it? Well, I figure Allison is smart. I'd ask myself, now, if I was him, what would I do? What would you do? I'd hold up the payroll truck to the tungsten mine. Sounds pretty risky. She goes loaded, boy. 80,000 bucks every trip. With that kind of money for a stake, a guy could really make you get away. How could he? I figure Allison would be there to hijack that truck, and I'd be there to get him. You're terrific. Have another sarsaparilla. I don't think I better. Something I ate disagreed with me. Excuse me, will you please? You'd better go back to the hideout and stay there until they grab Allison. I'm getting tired of that joint. All we do is play gin and I lose. I must be lucky in luck. Please, Duke. As a favor to me. Okay, but if you put it that way. Where's Spike? Outside, I guess. Take it easy, big boy, until I get in touch with you. I must, I must. Be seeing you. Well, what's the matter? I got an idea from that big fathead about that payroll truck. When is payday at that tungsten outfit? Tomorrow, but count me out, mister. 
I gave you a break by framing the judge. The least you can do is help me get a stake. Just what do you expect me to do? You get Bud and the boys. Have them meet Spike and me at the hideout tomorrow. When that payroll truck comes along, we'll knock it off, kill the guard, and your pals, Allison and Rogers, will be blamed for it. I'll take that part of it. And that's the deal? Yes. Take care of my boys, and then keep right on going. I thought you were beginning to care for me. I'm looking after Bill Bonner. Well, you're pretty smart at that. So long, Bill. Good luck. That blowhard they call Frog was listening to every word you said to Bell. Are you sure? Sure, I'm sure. I just saw him duck in the shadows over there beyond that car. Oh. Well, let's see if he'll follow us. right along. So that's where they've been keeping themselves. If you'll stay here, Judge, I'll take a look around. Okay. Snoopy, spill it. Huh? You were listening to what I told Bell Bonner. Why, no. Yes, I was. Why? Well, I figured you fellas was them fugitives. Yeah? Me knowing so much about crooks, I was gonna catch you. Go on. I guess I kinda overreached myself. But this is gonna alarm me not to be playing detective by myself. By yourself, huh? Yeah. There's no fool like fool. That's right. You should have warned the ranger you suspected us. And let him glom on that reward? I ain't that foolish. You could have split it with him. I ain't splitting with nobody. I'm a lone wolf. So you figured you'd capture the whole lot of us single-handed, huh? And I'd have done it if I hadn't got careless. Okay, park him in the back room. Come on, kill it to them. Let's play some more generally. We've got something more important than cards. Him? <laughs> He's goofy. Yeah? I hope that thought will comfort you when they put a rope around your neck. Huh? If he ever talks with dead pigeons. Go ahead. I could use a drink first. sample was fine. Now I'll have the real drink. That'll be enough for now. Somebody prowling around outside. 
Well, did you learn anything? Plenty. They've swallowed the bait. You better stay here and keep an eye on them. I'll phone Bob to meet me at the J Bar, and we'll be back as quick as we can make it. All right. The other guy was, didn't you? Looked like Rogers. It was. We gotta get out of here right now. Nah. This thing'll work out yet. All right. Your phone call, Rogers. I ought to put you under arrest, but I'm ready to hear what you've got to say. All I've got to say is this: Judge Gray is innocent. If you'll string along with me, I'll prove it to you. Okay. Boys, get your horses. You better be right about this, Rogers. If I'm not, you can dust out one of those cells for me. It'll be neat and tidy. I'll see to that. Can we go with you, Roy? No, you boys get to bed. All right, gang, you go get the horses. I'll wake Miss Terry. All yours, Jack. Take them along. You know what to do? I'll stay with these two guys till I get your signal. Then I'll cut one of them loose and scram. Right. You get the picture, Judge? You're gonna hold up the payroll truck. And I don't think anything you can say is gonna convince anybody it wasn't you. Now get going, Jack. Here they come, eight of them, about a mile back up the trail. Okay. We'll get started now, boys. You wait till you see them, then cut and run. All right. Let's go. Get your hands up. You see, I was right. About what? Over there, Judge Gray. He's running the stick up. Ain't you gonna send somebody after him? Let him go. But he'll get help. By that time, it'll be all over but the shouting. And there's gonna be plenty of that. I just sighted the truck from Sentinel Rock. It'll reach the bottom in about five minutes. Good. Tie those guys up in a hurry. We gotta get going. Are you ready, Judge? Drop your guns and get your hands up. There's Roy, and he's got him. Have you got all our guns yet? Yeah, okay. That's them. There's the fellers I picked up. I want you guards to notice that that fellow wearing the black suit is impersonating Judge Gray. We got you, Ranger. You're back. All right, Posse, you can come out now. All right, boys. All right, bud. You can start walking your men into town. Boys, boys. You all did a fine job. 
I hope Roy brings my suit back. hat was thrown back and his spurs were a jingling and as he approached he was singing this song Whoopie tie, I oh, get along little doggie it's your misfortune and none of my own Whoopie tie, I oh, get along little doggie you know that Wyoming will be your new home It's riding and yelling and driving the doggies and oh how I'm wishing you all would go on it's whooping and punching, go on, little doggies. You know that Wyoming will be your... Well, get a load of that. <laughs> Any hard feelings, Ranger? Not at all. Whoopie tie, I go, get along, little doggies. You know that Wyoming will be your new home. Congratulations, Judge. Thanks, Bob. Where Jim's and weed and sandwich grow. We'll fill you up from quickly pear choya until you are ready for old Idaho. Terry, if I would ask you now, would you still say no? Yes, Bob. Well, we're even again, but not for long. When moonrise comes on, we heard them on the bed ground. All these little doggies that roll on so slow. We round up the herd and we cut out the strays and roll the small doggies that never rolled before. Is it no to me, too? No. Do you mean yes? She said no. But that isn't what she means, is it, Terry? No. Say yes. Yes. No, it's too complicated for me. I can't follow it. You don't have to, Bob. From now on, three's a crowd. <laughs> <laughs> 